Hello, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and I'm going to show you how to remove the reservoir from a G-Series pump. This includes the G3, the G1, or like what we have here, an electric grease jockey. These pumps all use the same reservoirs, so the process is going to be the same. The first step before we take anything apart is to clean the thing off. You can see this guy is pretty dirty, so before we do any work on it, we're going to need to clean it off. But the larger reservoirs, which are the four liter and larger sizes, have an adapter ring in here, which makes them a little bit more tricky to remove. So we'll get to that later. For now, we'll set that aside and start with our two liter reservoir. The two liter reservoir is pretty easy to remove. You just need a big strap wrench. This is a 30 inch strap, so it's about two and a half feet. And you can actually just lay the pump flat on a table as long as you can hold it down securely and then you attach your strap I like there's a rib on these reservoirs and I like to get my wrench kind of next to that rib to give it some grip and also slide this down as close to the base as you can and all we got to do is put a little pressure on there and it spins right off so now whether we have a broken reservoir that needs to be replaced or we have a need to change to a larger size or like the case of this guy, we mixed a couple of greases together and we want to clean the grease out. So it's that simple. The two liters, like I said, come off pretty easily and it's pretty straightforward. If you're going to be putting the reservoir back on, make sure you find this green O-ring. So let's go ahead and put this back on now. I'm going to sit it upright for a minute. There's a groove around the outside of the ricer plate, but actually on top of it that the green o-ring sits in so we're going to just place that back in there one note about the ricer plate too you almost never need to remove the ricer plate if you ever do or like if you're going to replace the low level paddle and wiper arm assembly the wiper arm is a reverse thread so you rotate that clockwise to remove it and then the ricer plate you can pry off with a couple of big flathead screwdrivers but again if you're just changing a reservoir there's no need to remove the ricer plate in this case, because I want to remove some mixed grease, then I would want to lift the ricer plate up so I can get into that funnel shaped part underneath there and clean all the grease out. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to get into that today. I'm just going to put this reservoir back on, even with the old grease in it. We want to make sure that we have our baffle rod installed here and it's seated because it needs to be lined up with the hole on top of the motor shaft which is where the wiper arm is attached so now we're going to just set that on so that it that the rod goes in that hole and there now the thing's set down there's a little bit of air trapped in that cavity on top of the hole in the wiper arm but now this thing is already twisted on a little bit so now i just need to lay it on its back i'm actually going to throw the strap wrench on just to make sure I have it all the way because I'm not quite there. And with the two liter, there, it stopped rotating. There's a place where it actually can't turn anymore. So you'll feel it kind of hesitate and that's the point you stop. At that point, this rib should be essentially parallel to the face of the controller. And that's all that's to it with a two liter. So now, as I said, the four liter is a little bit trickier so I'm going to invite a special guest to join me, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Welcome back. In this next section, I have a special guest from our tech lab, the man who's probably taken apart more G3s than anyone else, at least here in this building, and his name is John Kavalowski, and I'm going to ask John now to describe for us some of the special tools that we need for these larger reservoirs. Yeah, well, Graco does have the L bracket, for the windmill pump, that's that's available to use so you can mount the G3 pump. What we've done in the lab is we've just welded up this C-channel with a piece of flat iron welded to the bottom. That just makes it easy to mount into a vise. So the whole point is so that we can, we can put this into a vise and have the vise hold it fast while we're cranking on it. Correct. And another option might be to leave the pump installed. Just if you're in a dirty environment, that's kind of a bad idea because grease cleanliness is a lot more important than people sometimes realize. But it is an option that if you're in a place that's fairly clean, you could just leave the G3 mounted and do, do all this in place. So what else do we need, John? 
Uh, it works good here with a strap wrench. We've got a two and a quarter inch wide strap wrench that works well in the, the reservoir. But what did you say? It's a 54 inch strap? It's 54 inch by two and a quarter inch. The wider is nice. It tends to do a little bit more even loading on this reservoir. These are very tough. We never cracked them. I never have using a strap wrench. Yeah, it's a polyamid resin, so it's a tough material, and you'll see them deforming a little bit temporarily while you reef on right, them. But the right. big thing is that this is so wide that you need a huge strap wrench that's actually pretty hard to find, which is why we're gonna provide you a link. Yep. So then there's one other thing we need, and what's that, John? Yeah, what works really good is when you've got this strap wrench attached to the reservoir, and we like to attach it on the, the four liter or larger at the very base here near the adapter ring. So you've got your strap wrench down here, the base is mounted on this bracket in a vise. There's a lot of torque. So what we do is to keep the adapter ring from spinning off of the pump base, if you have access, and you will, obviously in any tool set, a 3 8 ratchet drive extension, we want to use two or three of those. And what we're going to do is we're going to just place those in two or three locations around the base of the adapter ring. And they'll, they'll drop into these holes that are molded in the bottom of the adapter ring. And you just rest it against either a plug or one of the pump elements. So we've got two plugs on this pump and obviously one, one uh, pump element. And so you would just place that extension right against the pump so that when you torque, you have a, somewhat of a counter torque holding that adapter ring in place. And again, these aren't a special tool. They're just the extensions for your 3 8 inch socket. So it's not something you have to go out and buy special. The key is that we want the adapter ring to stay attached to the base initially because otherwise the whole reservoir assembly can get hung up on the low level paddle. And then it's also when you put it back together, you want to be able to put the adapter ring on first because otherwise it's really hard to line up that baffle rod, which we saw the baffle rod on the two liter and we'll take a closer look at the baffle rod on this as well. But let's go ahead and move out to the lab where we have a more substantial vise and we can set this up and demonstrate how to remove this. We're out in our lab now where we have some big vices, a little bigger than the ones we use in the training room. And we've mounted the pump onto that bracket we showed you and put the bracket in the vise and now we're ready to proceed to the next step. So we're gonna take these socket extensions again and put them up against a couple different places. The best practice is to use three if you can. You really need a partner at that point to help you hold them. If you're completely on your own and can't get anybody else to help, just take some duct tape. and You can actually run a strap of duct tape around the whole thing to hold these extensions in place. So now John's getting our huge strap wrench. And as he was saying in the previous segment, we don't want to go off the top here. When you have more than a four liter where you have these expansion rings, you want to be on that bottom expansion ring just so that this is the part you're torquing on. So all right, now we're going to hold these socket extensions and John's going to go ahead and remove this. I'm going to do one thing here. It's a really, it's a really tight one. So I'm just going to try to bite it down a little bit lower. Get a little bit on, of leverage. Yep, on the reservoir. It won't, it'll tend not to buckle as much and I'll get more power into this removal. The reservoir actually goes down and covers most of the adapter ring. So even though the strap is covering the ring, he's really still torquing on the reservoir. If it'll grip it, that's fine. It is moving. There we go, now it's coming. So as you can see, easier said than done. This is the kind of thing you only do when you really have to. If you break a reservoir, or in this case, this is an old pump that I need to dump the grease out of and dispose of the grease properly before we just throw this thing in the trash at its end of life. But yeah, that was a lot of effort to loosen that. And at this point, we don't want to lift this off yet because all the grease is going to fall out and make a mess. But now that it's loose, we can take it out of the bracket lay it on its back again on some kind of a mat or a rag and then we'll tip the reservoir off and allow us to get the grease out. And then we'll start with a clean reservoir to show you the reassembly and cover some do's and don'ts in that. So thanks John for your help. You bet. John's a busy guy so we let him get back to work. From here on out it's just a one person job anyway. It's a lot easier to get this adapter ring off than it is to get the reservoir off of the adapter ring. Typically, you're going to be able to leave the adapter ring in place if you're just replacing a broken reservoir or something like that. You don't really need to change out the adapter ring unless it is damaged or something like that. 
If you do need to remove it, this again is a reverse thread, so you're going to go clockwise on the wiper arm to remove it. It came off pretty easily because I'd already loosened it off screen. And then from here, we just want to probably clean this off as best we can. There's also an O-ring in here that will lift out. And then we're just going to put our strap wrench back on this like we did with the reservoir. We don't need those ratchet extensions anymore because they were just to keep the adapter ring from moving and now we want the ring to move. There. We've got this down to the bare base. Here's that green O-ring again. But other than cleaning this up, it's ready to receive a new reservoir of any size, whether you want to put a two liter on here, or if you want to convert to a reservoir with autofill shutoff, or whatever you want to do with this base, we're ready to go ahead and reassemble it after we clean it up. Before we get into reassembling the reservoir onto the base, I want you to see why we don't want this adapter ring to come off with the reservoir itself. This is the baffle rod right here that's actually inside, and you can see I have the reservoir on this side all the way up against the wiper arm, and this one has that adapter still attached. You cannot get the baffle rod to line up into that hole that it's supposed to go into. It's virtually impossible to get this back on and have the rod go into the right place. So what I have to do now essentially is just remove this whole thing, pull the rod out of the middle there and put this whole reservoir back on and then use the socket extensions in these fins down here like we were showing you and remove the reservoir again with the adapter ring installed on the base. Then we can put the rod back in here and we'll be able to put the whole thing together the right way. Before we can complete the reassembly, we need to notice that there is a mark on the adapter ring to tell us when it's tightened all the way, and it needs to line up with the two domes here on top of the low level sensor. So these two things right here are the low level sensor. They actually work by picking up the magnet on this paddle. Anyway, there's a little dot here, and it's not in line with these anymore, and that's because the adapter ring did still twist a little bit while we were removing the reservoir. So before we can proceed, we need to tighten that back on. There is a new style of adapter ring that we're starting to use now that has these additional holes in it, but it still has the little dot here that tells you when the adapter ring is completely on. And just like the two liter reservoir, there is a stop that keeps you from over tightening this part when we add the expansion ring and reservoir bowl pieces, there's no stop for those, but this guy there, we just tightened it back up. And now the three, now this hole is in a nice straight line with these three. I loosened this guy to get it out of the way, so I'm just gonna tighten that again. Now we're finally ready to reassemble the pump with the new reservoir. And in case you didn't notice, this is a different pump than the one I disassembled. That other one was headed for the trash anyway, and I decided it just wasn't worth cleaning it up. So here I have a new pump that needs the reservoir replaced. Regarding the reservoir kits, there are several part numbers that you might see as different reservoir kits. There are a couple of kits that we call replacement kits. The ones that are the most complete kits are the reservoir upsize kits. They include the adapter ring, the O-rings that you need, and actually uh, assembled reservoir. And then they also come with the wiper arm and low level paddle assembly, and of course the correct length baffle rod for you. So these would be part numbers 571155, this is 571156, and then 571157 and 571158 are the two larger sizes. And again, these are the kits that I would recommend that you order if you need a complete reservoir replacement because they were intended to upsize a two liter pump to one of these larger size reservoirs, but because they have all the parts, they make a great replacement kit when you need a whole new reservoir. And because these two pieces are assembled at the factory, 
it's going to be a lot easier for you than trying to order the separate pieces and put them together because it's a real pain. We actually have a special jig for assembling these and we assemble them before we put them on a new pump. So in the field, if you're trying to build it up piece by piece, you're not even doing it the way we do it here in the factory. So again, I highly recommend getting one of those complete kits that are called the reservoir upsize kits. So now we've already installed our adapter ring. That green O-ring is underneath there where it belongs. So this O-ring goes on. There's a big groove at the bottom and it fits in there kind of loosely. So just make sure it's all the way down to that bottom edge. The next thing you want to pay attention is that there's a little brass bushing or plain bearing that sits inside of the hole in the middle of this paddle assembly. So that needs to go in the top there. I suppose you could go ahead and put it in after you install the whole assembly to the base, but I just put it in there so I didn't forget. So now that's tight enough. And the baffle rod now has this fork on the top and there are two holes in the top of the reservoir. So we're gonna make sure that we get these in the right holes. The, the big center part goes in the center of the reservoir, of course, and then that side prong goes in the smaller hole on the side. Make sure that goes all the way in. And then we just set it down in there and now we can line up the baffle rod with that hole, which is that same spot where that brass bushing sat. And I'm gonna rotate this backwards so that I seat the threads properly. And there we go, now we can just twist it on. And once it starts resisting, we get the strap wrench out again. Now there is no hard stop like there was for the two liter reservoir and for the adapter ring. We just wanna keep an eye on the gap here so as the Brits say, mind the gap. And once the gap is gone and the G3 sticker is to the front and therefore the vent, this is the vent. Once it's all the way to the back, we can stop. So here we come. And yeah, there's no hard stop. So what you want to pay attention to is there's a seam right here and you want that to be right in the middle of the display. There, that's right on. And we are done. This pump is ready to be filled with some new grease and put back into service. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions about G3 pumps, reservoirs, or any other Graco product, please feel free to contact us. We are always happy to hear from you.